our speaker, Apostle Daniel uh, Lamola. He's the founding senior pastor of one of the fastest growing church in South Africa, God's throne for all nations, G-T-F-E-N. Together with his wife, Prophetess T. Lamola, uh, pastoring uh, the church based in Pretoria, South Africa. Apostle Lamola is a family man blessed with three kids, Letato, Litato, Diceto, and uh, Mudeu. Yeah, yeah, the last one is Mudeu. <laughs> and you understand, you understand, you understand. And he has penned and authored uh, more than 10 books on leadership and leadership manuals and church leadership training courses. Apostle Lamola hosts an annual pastors and leaders clinic. That's a conference that attracts pastors and church leaders across the nation of South Africa. He's an apostolic voice for uh, leadership, church governance, church management, church administration, as well as church finances. Apostle Lamola is an academic uh, by profession. He's a scholar of the word. And he possesses a special grace of, a grace of teaching and preaching the word with the power and simplicity. He's an apostle of the supernatural manifest presence of, of God, used by God in strong discernment, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, word of uh, faith, uh, healings, and miracles. And in his ministry, the following has been witnessed. Blind receiving their sight, crippled walking, Hania closed, stroke healed, among many other healings that have taken place. Of course, many have been delivered from various forms of demonic oppression and possession and torment. Apostle Lamola uh, has planted several churches across the three provinces of South Africa, Guateng, Pumolanga, and Northwest Province. Through his apostolic and prophetic network of uh, called Life and Light Network of Churches, the apostle provides spiritual covering and mentorship to many sons and daughters in the faith, with more than six independent churches and ministries that submit under his leadership. Apostle Lamola is popular in conferences in South Africa and beyond. He is featured in most conferences in South Africa. His marriage ministry his marriage ministry, Daniel Lamola Ministries, hosts an annual marriage conference in Swaziland, uh, Manzini. Therefore, Apostle Lamola is flexible and well-informed to address different topics in Christianity, from family to church, from leadership to finance. And I think he has come to us as a servant of the Lord, as a prophet for the hour. And I pray that you will open up your spirit, that God will give you that word. You know, that word that can change you, that word that you can run with. Hallelujah. So let's receive the prophet, the man of God, so that we can receive his blessing. Let's all arise and make him welcome in the name of the Lord. Let's welcome uh, Apostle Daniel Mamola and his armor bearer, Emmanuel. Let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Hallelujah. Shall we thank the Lord? Father, we appreciate you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you for this hour. We know there is nothing impossible with you. You are able to do exceeding, abundant, far beyond our expectation. I thank you for every soul, every spirit and body gathered here. For I know you shall minister to them and none of them shall go home the same. In Jesus' name, amen. We may be seated in his presence. <clears throat> A special word of greetings to the Honorable Bishop and my Bishop Kimani, such great leaders. I said in the first session that um, in South Africa, where I come from, they hold you 
in high regard. They recognize you as one of the fathers of the faith movement. And it's such a great privilege and pleasure that we can be here to share the word of God on this highly esteemed platform. Shall we appreciate, honor, and appreciate the bishop? Oh, come on, let's appreciate the bishop. We can do better than that. Let's put those hands together again for the bishop. We appreciate you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. The great leadership team and all various leaders and heads of different ministries that are co-laboring with him, we recognize you and we thank you for choosing this as a um, platform for you to serve and exercise your God-given gifts. May the good Lord reward you and bless you. Amen. And all the people joining on different platforms through YouTube and those that are joining through Facebook and all the people that are present in and outside the building receive our greetings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we, we continuing um, on the subject of foundations of restoration. But at this session... Um, allow me to subtitle this foundation that I'm dealing with uh, service and loyalty service and loyalty one of the great scholars and leaders in church leadership the father to John C. Maxwell uh, his name is Oswald Sanders. He penned a book and he, in that book he outlined a number of principles that spiritual leaders or church leaders encounter. And one of the principles that he mentioned in that book, he said, loneliness. The higher you go in ministry, the more on top you are, the more the network of fellowship narrows. If that be true, it means there is a need for support system. There is a need for support system because collectively we are called the ladder holder. You know when the people walk in construction, the higher you go on a two-legged ladder, the more unstable the ladder. If you were to be taking a ladder to reach to the balcony area, it will still be a little bit comfortable. But if you were to get to the ceiling with a ladder, it become more shaky. Therefore, if the ladder will become more shaky, you will need more people to hold the ladder. The higher you climb, the more the people should hold. The tragedy could be those that are supposed to hold the ladder are now shaking the ladder. And when they shake the ladder, the climber is no longer concentrating on seeing what God wants to show, but on the stability of the ladder. The moment he defocused to look at am I safe, he is no longer able to see what God needs us to see and to have. So it means if we can come together to hold the ladder for the senior leaders to see beyond the years, then we will get somewhere. It is Paul the Apostle in his last days of ministry writing to, to Timothy and he said, come quickly before I depart. In this second letter, chapter number 4, around verse number 18, he says, I'm in verse 10 and 11 and I'm going to go to 18. He says, where I am, Alexandra dealt ruthlessly with me. Demas left me because he, he liked the things of the world. Only Luke stayed with me. Please bring Mark because he is useful in the work of the ministry. May the same be said about you. That your pastor can stand and say, bring that one because they are useful in the work of the ministry. There is a challenge, particularly when the church 
begin to grow past one decade to the second decade to the third decade familiarity creeps in people feel more home you know in in the construction the mining and the high risk industry or you can even go to the bushery you look at that experience mid cutter he no longer follow the protocols because he's just so used to cutting the meat with the jigsaw that moves up and down and often number of them have got one or two fingers missing why because they got familiar with age as time passed they then ignored the standard procedure and protocol that is why a wise eagle when he grow beyond years and years he will take time to retreat to the mountain to renew the beak and to pluck off the old feathers so that he can be relevant to the generation that God is raising now and it is therefore the intention and the purpose of this session to bring our attention back to the foundation of or the culture of service and the culture of being loyal to God's work we are reading in the book of second corinthians chapter number 8 and we are picking verse number 5 and not only as we had hoped a good student will still go to verse 4 but for the sake of reading let's continue for the sake of preaching but they first gave themselves to the lord so the first release that you do you need to give yourself to the lord your god and then to us also by the will of god so every believer has got two dimension of release giving and sacrifice that they need to do you need to give yourself to the lord collectively collectively and completely but secondarily you need to give yourself to your local church completely the version that i have put it this way this was very spontaneous entirely their own idea and caught us completely off guard what explained it was that they had first given themselves unreservedly to god and unreservedly to us says paul the apostle the other giving simply followed out of the purpose of God working in their lives. It is not enough to give yourself to God. You need to give yourself to God and also to the leadership of your local house. There is nothing that God in his sovereignty can do in the land of the living without partnering with man he said i look for a man that i should not destroy the city and i found none god will be illegal to appear in kenya nairobi himself as god we will break our feet running from his aid but god from genesis to revelation always partnered with man and whenever you wanted him you needed to find a man that god chose and partnered with the book of second samuel chapter 23 is my last reading the bible says in verse number 15 david longed for water and said Oh that someone will get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three mighty men broke through the Philistine camp, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and brought it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. If it was me I'll take offense. If it was you, 
you'll take an offense. Imagine your pastor says, we need money for the sound system. You bring money and says, I don't want it. Verse number 17. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of this man who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. And these are the examples of the exploits of the three that they have done. I want to integrate these two stories in the remaining time and split this session into two to first address the subject service for a few minutes and jump over to loyalty, integrate them and conclude the session. He that want to be great among you must be a servant. The highest position in a church is servanthood. The highest responsibility you can ever be given in the house of God is to be a servant. To serve means to help someone to progress or to complete a set task. I don't know about the beautiful country of Kenya, but in other African countries that I traveled, I found what they call a crab syndrome. If you were to take crabs and put them in a bucket or a bottle, they will all die in that bottle. Because when one crab sees light out and want to jump out, the other crabs pull it down. My fellow Africans, we have got a problem of seeing another person of our color rising. We always ask a question. Why not me? Brethren grace doesn't have eyes. Grace choose. Even where you reject. Grace a point where do you disapproved. Grace is the eye of the Lord. That doesn't need human approval. When God chose Abraham. Lord. Do yourself favor. Follow Abraham. Because he's in a covenant with the God of heaven. Don't wish to be called. Follow the code. When he wants to call you, he will call you by his time and terms. So to serve is to help somebody fulfill a task. It's to participate using what you have or what you know. To achieve a common goal or vision. Is to put the interests of others above your own interest. In the house of the Lord, we have three levels of service. And I want you to check yourself. It is in the book of Joshua 14, 8. The Bible says, And nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people mad. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. The first dimension of serving in the house of the Lord is to serve until you know you are conscious and you are aware that you are saving. If you are aware that you are saving, you can make appointment on a Sunday because you are consciously aware that you are a servant in the house of the Lord. Number two, in Deuteronomy 136, the Bible says, but except Caleb the son of Jephuna, he shall see it, and to him and his children, I'm given to the land on which he walked, because he, fall, he wholly followed the Lord. This is Moses talking about a member of his church. At the first instant, Caleb says, I follow the Lord wholeheartedly. In the second instant, they talk about him. So your service if it doesn't overflow, it's not yet service. You need to serve until they know you are not in choir today. That's why there is no fire. You need to serve until they ask, where are you? Because there is no order in protocol. Your service must be indispensable. The day you leave the church to get a job in Jamaica, they need to get five people to replace your own office that you held. Why? 
Because you are indispensable. Everybody is replaceable. But some people are indispensable. You will need to call five meetings. To appoint five people. To replace one man or one woman. That serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Hallelujah. In Numbers 14, 24, it's also written. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went. This is the Lord saying. So you need to serve until you know you are saving. And you need to serve until your leaders know you are saving. And you need to serve until God Make a statement. Have you noticed my servant job in the land of Nairobi where people are doing their thing but I've got a job in Nairobi. That is the people that serve until they grab the attention of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Of course there are benefits when you serve. The first benefit is obvious. In 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 12, the Bible says, believers will be subjected to a judgment called Bema judgment. This is not a judgment of hell or heaven. The judgment of hell and heaven is Revelation 20. The Bema judgment is a judgment of works. What you did with your talent, with your ability, with your resources. Can it stand? If it win and stand, you will get a reward. But in Numbers 23, verse number 25, the Bible says, but if you serve the Lord, sickness will be removed from amongst you. There are few dimensions when you deal with healing. You can go to the hospital and they give you medicine to restore the functionality of the organ. That's healing. You can, your body can naturally heal. Again, you can be made whole. The Bible says, the one who went back to say thank you was made whole. The others were healed. What is the difference? The difference is, leprosy was a skin condition. Then in its severity, your body parts will fall. The man that came back, and the Bible used the word, he was made whole. It means if the finger fell, a new finger was grown to him again. You are made whole. But that is, to be made whole is a lower dimension than what God promised in Exodus. To be made whole is a restoration of a fallen organ. But to be in an experience of sickness eviction, this is what happened. Suppose this glasses are HIV or coronavirus. God says and this is the human tissue. He says I'll come in your midst not heal not make whole but I will remove the sickness from the dying tissue and the dying tissue will become normal. So when you serve the Lord you tap into a level of eviction of sickness. Those that serve God, there is eviction of sickness. In Isaiah 38 verse 1 and verse 5 to 6, there is reversal of judgments and death sentences. If you don't believe me, Look at a guy called Epaphroditus. 
The Bible says, Epaphroditus, Philippians 2, verse 25 to 30, he stayed in prison, not as a prisoner, but as a messenger of Paul. When Paul was arrested, Epaphroditus went with him to stay in prison so he can transport the letters to churches. And the Bible says he was sick to death, but for the sake of the service, he rendered to Paul, he was made whole, healed, delivered completely. In Isaiah, a man was sentenced to death. God says, God tell him, you will die or set your house in order. And the Bible says, the man looked to the wall and prayed and said, oh Lord, remember how I saved you. And God says, for service, I will react differently. He said, God tell him, he will no longer die. And I give him 50 more years. I say, he will not die. He will get 50 more years. Why? He served the Lord in the days of his life. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is supernatural healing and deliverance from death when you serve. Philippians 2, 25, 30, we'll check it for yourself. Epaphroditus is totally healed You know, if there are people, what do you call the power that supplied the electricity here? What is the name of the entity? Power. Kenya Power. You see, Kenya Power has got poles that hold the power lines. Is it true? But then there are other poles that are not holding the lines. They are supporting a pole that holds the lines. When they, when they release a tender, for somebody to clean for the poles of Kenya power, they will also by default clean for this pole, although it's not attached to power, but it's supporting what attaches to power. So when you give yourself in the local church, when God nourishes seven, by the default of horizontal connection, you also receive the cleaning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, shout hallelujah. There is spontaneous deliverance from all form of curses. 1 Samuel 4, 24 and 25 and verse number 45. Some of you know the Bible very well. This is Israel going to fight. And Saul says, curse be anyone that if they eat anything until we overcome. And his son, bring the rank, go to fight, Jonathan. He didn't hear the curse words. And when he come back, after he killed the Philistine, he, Saul realized somebody broke the commandment. And he says, let him be killed because the curse was pronounced. And the Bible says, the people that were supposed to kill Jonathan, they refused to kill him. They defied the order of the king to execute and activate the curse, they said, you can do this because Jonathan served you wholeheartedly. May it be so with you. May the Lord give you the same grace that somebody who had planned evil against you, God will not allow it to happen. And God will say, this daughter served me so well. This man served me so well. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Say, I'm a servant of the Lord. Say, I'm a servant of the Lord. Say, I've given myself to God. And I've given myself to the local house. In Jesus' name. It's not enough until you understand the signs of a matured servant. A matured servant are able to take correction without offense. When you are a matured servant, you can be rebuked, you can be corrected, you can be sent, even against your will. The three mighty men, they risked their life to break the life.
time to get the water that David spilled to the ground. And he said, I don't want it. The mature servant multiply what has been given to them. If you got a cell group of three people, maturity will be proved in the multiplication of your cells. That is why no one should fight to say, I'm cold, I need a pulpit. Let them take you to the cell. Let them give you two people. In three weeks when they come, let them find 50. And they split you to the next cell. Let them give you one person. Go win 40. When they come, you let your work speak for you. Don't make demand. Let your work speak for you. Let them take you to the third cell. Multiply it. Give it to 20 people. The new month they give you another cell. Because there is a mark of a matured son inside of you. Matured servant, they take corrections and rebuke without offense. They've got the capacity to receive instruction and execute them as instructed without adding anything. They are known by tabling issues at right platform. They don't go on the corner to cause gossips. If they've got an issue with you, they come to you. If they differ with you, they call an elder. If they can't get it, they escalate the matter. They don't gossip with matters in the corners. Mature servants, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. It says, that which I've given to you, master it, give it to other people. Tell them to also give it to other people. So the wisdom of God in expansion is service. The wisdom of God in expansion is service. Selfishness has no space in the kingdom. Because what God does, he put it on Jacob. He says to Jacob, let's, let's do it right. He put it on Abraham. He says, give it over to Isaac. He passed it to Isaac. He said, Isaac, give it to Jacob. He said, Jacob, split it into 12. He said, 12, make it a kingdom now. It is not enough to be good. Your good is not good until it's duplicated into others. Excellency is measured by reproduction in the ministry. To be a good singer or preacher or usher or protocol or intercessor will be evident when your people can do what you did excellently and they do it better than you even in your absence. Hallelujah. So don't serve the way you want to serve. Serve how God wants you to serve. Let me rush quick so that I can cover the as you serve, you need to be loyal. loyal. Loyalty is defined as using your time, your resources, your talents, your gifts, your privilege to forge or promote unity for the advancement of the vision of the local church. It's giving yourself completely to the local church and to give yourself completely to God. It means never participating in activities contrary to the spirit, the culture, and the well-being of the local church. When we say you are loyal, it means you soaked yourself completely. You are one with this thing. If the church is going down, you are also hating. If the church is not doing well, you don't find a reason to shout and celebrate. This loyalty is as a result of pride. Lucifer is a classic example. The Bible says in John 13 2, Satan entered into Judas and he began to change the behavior. As you serve, guard against the enemy so that you can remain a loyal soldier in the kingdom of God. The other source of disloyalty is keeping wrong company of people. People with bad influence. People that always see the negative. 
They always see when people don't come to church. But when we welcome new members, they don't see, they don't talk about them. Such company, the Bible says, a company, if you keep a company of wise people, you become wise. If you keep a company of gossipers, you become a master gossiper. Luke 71 says, offends. Other people, they are offended and they don't know how to address issue with other people and they harbor it inside and that becomes a delay. The other source is competition and covetousness. You always want to be class as the best. People can do and sing. You don't see a reason to dance. But when it's you, you want everybody to dance because you think you are the best. Best people don't know they are best. They are surprised when they are told you are the best. People that know, they never say I know. It's only people that don't know that say they know. People that are highly gifted, they don't know they are gifted. It's only when we tell them you are gifted, they get shocked and say me. No, maybe we're talking about them. I'm not gifted. Because disloyalty breed in competition. Unspoken differences and unresolved conflicts are the sources of disloyalty. If there are differences and you don't deal with them, the enemy will breed on them to kill and to destroy and to steal. And the other one is assumption. Assumption is the mother of all crises. Ask. Nobody has ever been beaten for asking. If you don't know, ask. Don't break the camera. Ask, how do we operate? Don't cross the line. Just ask, how do we do? Asking is a sign of humility. Humble people ask. Don't bend the meat if you don't know how to cook. Ask women that cook, they'll show you how to cook. You're always complaining, I don't have money because you always buy meat, you burn it. Humility will say, take yourself down. Ask, how did you build this massive auditorium? Let them share the wisdom so you can do the same thing. Dr. Lennox Maxwell identified the sign, signs of disloyalty. One, he said, is independent spirit. Nobody can tell you. You are very independent. It's you and God. In the Bible where we read, Paul says, this church, they've given themselves to God and also to me. Inde independent spirit is the same as an absolomic spirit. It, it always says, nobody can tell me. I'm more intelligent. I studied law. What do they know? I studied mathematics. I'm a genius. I know better. I'm called. I'm chosen. I'm anointed. Independent spirit. Number two, passiveness. When you start to see them being passive, you know disloyalty crept in. They used to be active in the church. But now they are nowhere. They come to church on calendar. Two weeks they are in. Two weeks they visit. It's about time. They will bid you farewell and bye bye. Number three. They get into a stage of being critical. Critical of everything. Not the preacher. I heard him but he was too loud. No, no, he preaches, but he is loud. Or, no, he preaches, but he's too slow. Or, he preaches, but there is just bad. You can never just compliment and say, my bishop, you look beautiful. It will be, you look beautiful, but. Critical stage is a sign of disloyalty. You never appreciate the service was hot. No, but the guy who was playing drums. No, 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 no. The band was good, but a critical spirit. It's very dangerous. If we want to arrive into demonstration of the kingdom of God, we need to deal away with criticality. From there is negativity. Everything in the church is done wrong, except when you are involved in the doing of it. Even it's other people that did it. Uh, why didn't they bring me to cook for the speakers? 
don't you know I measure in rice and I specialize in chicken? If it was me, the guests will have given compliment that the food was nice. You have got the wrong spirit. So negative that if you were not part of it, it was never done good. It can only be good if it was you that was involved. From there, they will become political. They start to form groups in the church. And when they form groups, they influence again others. They'll tell you, no, but that one, you know, he, he loves to be close to bishop. Don't mind him. He, he just wants to be close to bishop. He thinks he will catch the anointing by... He become political. They politicize everything in the church. Then they get into the state of deception. Self-deceived, deceiving others, and everybody get to be deceived. So in the state of deception, you hear people say, but did you see a lot of people are leaving the church? Why do you take delight if that was true? Why does your spirit get excited when people leave the church? Can't you see you are teaming up with the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy? Because Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and it will never scatter. Why does your spirit get excited hearing whoever that was funding project left our church? It's because you are deceived. The enemy told you things that you were not supposed to hear. In this state, they move into open rebellion. You see, respect sometimes will say, you can gossip about the pastor in his absentia. But when you get to this re open rebellion stage, you, you speak bad about the pastor in his presence and say, let him touch me. What can he do me? I have my rights. My rights are enshrined in the constitution of Kenya. I'll speak my mind. I'm independent. I'm not a psychological dwarf. I'm not a child. I'm learned. We need facts on the table. Come with it, pastor. We want to understand. Then you know, that's open rebelliousness. God has packed the bags. He's in South Africa. Left a long time ago. When God leaves, a person gets into open rebelliousness. And after that stage is execution. I always tell pastors, when you talk to pastors, never be afraid to chase a member from church. If you don't chase him early, he will go with a hundred more people. Or if you don't believe me, look into 1, 1 Kings chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. Look into 2 Samuel chapter number 7. Look at the story of Lucifer. I mean, let me just say this. I'm left with a few minutes. Do you think we can ever be better than God? God chased Lucifer from heaven. Do we think we can be better than Jesus? He chased uh, Judas. God ch chased Adam from the garden. We can never be better. Absalom. The son of David chased Ahithophel, Adonijah. He revolted and formed a conspiracy. He was gone. Sometimes in trying to be too good in the department with the consultation of protocols and proper procedures, some people need to be released from active participation because of disloyalty. Disloyalty is a seed it ferment and it overflow to innocent people. People that were so loyal and people that loved God wholeheartedly, they suddenly start to rebel. They suddenly no respect any person. They, they suddenly are full of themselves. They suddenly question everyone and everything and nobody does ever anything right except them. Because that disloyalty jumped over to them. But God says, give yourself wholly. Give yourself completely. 
Give yourself totally. Give yourself completely from your heart, from your soul, from your spirit. Be like Joshua and say, as for me and my house, we choose not other ways, but we choose to serve the Lord wholeheartedly, completely, with all our dogs, our cockroaches, our mosquito, everything that step in our house, it become arrested by the presence of God. And as for me and my house, we are going to go in the root of service, and we are going to go in the root of loyalty. We will leave no stone unt untapped. We will do everything in our power, and it will be known in the church that my family serve God. It will be known in the community that my semi my family service God it will be known in Zimmerman that as for my house we are the servant of God if you wake us in the middle of the night we will tell you we are the servant of the Lord we are loyal in the house of the Lord because Paul says we have given ourselves to God and we have given ourselves to the local heart we are not worshiping the man of God but we are worshiping God by bringing honor in the house of the living God and order because the house of God is a house of order is a house house of godly order somebody clap a hand for the lord and give him a hand of praise in the house come on clap hands for him and give him a hand of praise come on give him a hand of praise give him a hand of praise and make it in your heart that i will never revolt i'll never rebel i'll be loyal in the house of god i'll use everything every energy and everything that god has given to me to serve the lord may you raise your right hand say father in the name of jesus I thank you for the renewed strength. I thank you for the renewed courage. Come and say, Father, I thank you for making me indispensable. I thank you for the energy to serve you without compromise. I thank you for the energy, the zeal to work for you wholeheartedly. I recommit that as long as I'm alive, my church, my men of God, will not suffer the support of anything you have given to me in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus say Lord release your power upon my life make me your servant make me your servant I want to serve you wholeheartedly loyally Say, Lord, search me. If you find anything not right in my heart, remove it. I renew my spirit in the name of Jesus. May your word cleanse me that from this meeting, I will run like a gazelle in the service of the kingdom. That from this meeting, my commitment shall double my commitment shall increase to the glory and to the honor of god in jesus name shout amen and give him a hand of praise god bless you god bless you